up everybody out there? Welcome back to Addicted Fishing. Today we got a fishy little episode planned for you guys. This winter out here on the west coast in the northwest, we have just been getting pounded by big storms and big rainstorms and bad weather. And so all the rivers at home are all blown out. But luckily we live in this beautiful place where there's a big mountain range that goes right through the state. And when that weather comes in from the ocean, one side's crappy and rainy and one side's sunny. So, we are over here in the snow and the sun and the cold temperatures, and we're gonna go find some lakes to catch some trout in. There's a couple lakes I have in mind today, so we got Big Red, we got Tiny. We're meeting up with my best buddy, Phil Black, out here, and we're gonna grab our fly rods, and we're gonna grab our gear rods, and we're gonna go out on the lake and see if we can't find some big broodstock trout today in the middle of winter. So we're almost there. I'm gonna try to keep it in between the mayonnaise and mustard and not end up in a snowbank here, and let's go catch us some trout. Well, we have arrived and the fog is thicker than molasses in January, as they say. Picked up my best friend, Phil Black over here, the floss man himself. Hey and we're gonna dump Big Red into the lake here and row off into the unknown. I have no clue. Um, you know, I've been to this lake before, but we can't see a gosh darn thing. So we're gonna go, it might actually make the bite really good. Uh, but we're gonna just row until we run into stuff. Luckily, you can't go fast on this lake, so. Let's launch Old Red and see if we can get some fish in the boat. So primarily we're gonna be fly fishing today, but we're gonna take a couple different methods out there. We got some addicted floats and some Guide Select Pro Kumas, but then we also have our fly rods with some sinking lines and some woolly buggers. And we're gonna see which one works best. If we wanna hunt for them, I think we're gonna put some plugs in the water, row around with some flies, but we're gonna just row out, search, drop anchor, and see if we can't find where these fish are actively feeding and moving around in the lake this time of year. Just talked to a guy on the bank here as we pulled up. Of course, I forgot the anchor. So Phil went back to the truck and a local guy walked by us and said that he'd just caught a 29 inch rainbow trout out of this lake. So we're in the right place. They're obviously biting, did in the dead of winter like this. So the goal is try to get one on any form possible, whether it be fly, whether it be gear, whether it be throwing some power bait out there if we have to. Then we're gonna take this thing and do a little campfire catch cook. I got a fun little recipe that we're gonna do and uh, get our bellies full before the day's over. Oh, looking good, boys and girls. Got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Dang it. First blood, and that was deep, deep, deep down there. Hit it right by the boat. Kind of seemed like he might have been following it for quite a while. Dang it. So changing up our presentation a little bit. We're fished here for about a half hour so far. Got that one good bite. But now I know I'm not getting all the way to the bottom with this fly rod. It's probably about 20, 25 feet deep. So I'm going to try this big heavy cast master a few times before we move on through the lake. And kind of give it a jigging presentation and see if we can't bounce it back to us and put it in a giant fish's mouth. Still rolling out here, boys. Fish on, fish on, fish on. I'm trolling the cast master, guys. Trolling the casty. Just a little guy. Just a got little guy, but we'll keep him for bait. Just a little guy. Well, this guy is awfully puny. What do you think? Do we keep him? For a campfire meal or not? Little's yeah, it could be Little's Little's portion. You know, let's go ahead and let this little fella go. He's got room to grow. He's gonna go back and tell all of his friends that it's okay, right. that it's safe to bite the lures. Just a cute little rainbow here. Little hatchery fish. Cool. Well, first blood. He's just smashed it on the trolled. 
the old trolled uh, cast master here. Let's give it a few more shots, see if we can't find a big one. Well, that's a sign. We could just go with dueling cast masters and just row around in circles. Worst comes to worst here. But I still think the flies are gonna get the big ones. I've caught all my biggest fish in this particular place on flies, so. Some, for some reason, they're less scared of those. They're more prone for biting them. So we'll stick to it. Another one rolled it. Got him. Little guy. Little tiny guy. Oh, geez, he's fighting with all his might. All right, little guy. Oh, he came off. He came off. Oh, that's quite all right. We couldn't uh, eat that one anyhow, right? Little bugger. So a little tactic change, we decided to try to cover more water. We were having a hard time getting our getting our flies to get bit. We got a few fish. It's kind of been even back and forth in between the flies and gear. But we decided to put the trolling rods out. We got two cast masters off each side and a Brad's mini wiggler off the middle. And we're just gonna do a couple big circles around this lake. We don't need much for this little recipe. We only need about two or three trout. We caught a couple already that were a little too small. There's no really reason to kill them because they were just not much of a meal. So we got one little guy here worth eating. Now we're gonna make a big round around this lake. We're gonna go try some of the freshwater inlets with fly fishing again. And we're gonna just get us a couple more trout and then get back and get us a fire built. Feels a little better. Uh, a little better. Oh, not too, too. Not too much better. Better than the one we had, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this point in time, we don't really have a choice, do we? Let's get that bad boy in here. Looking pretty darn good there. You want me to just bring him in? Yeah, go ahead and yank him on in here. He's gonna get barbecued. Look at that little guy. Nice little morsel. Perfect little dude. Perfect size for the campfire. Well done, Phil. Phil came through in a clutch, you guys. Oh, they're rolling all around us. Now we're in the hot spot, boys. We're in the hot spot. All right, we're gonna get this little dude on the stringer. Get him out over the side of the boat again. Keep him fresh. Let's get us another panful. Came off. Came off. He pulled hard on that too. Farmed it again, he did. Oh, Leave it. it to the old man in the boat, farming off all the fish. We're farming them all. Out here in farm country. That one looked a little heavier. It did, it felt nice now too. Now we might all go hungry tonight. We might go hungry. Oh, because of my <laughs> premature. <laughs> Got him. Oh, here he comes. I'm bringing him right in, boys. This is a matter of life and death here. Eee! Got him, everyone. Just hammered the fly. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Brought him in a little premature here. The woolly bugger got her done, you guys. Woolly bugger's going to feed the city. Shiny little guy. Looks very healthy. Over here on the side of the lake that's got the clean water. Nicer one, huh? Is it? Feels a little Same stronger. Thing. Yeah. Sweet man, we're getting ourselves a pan full here. Nice. Oh, he spat it! He spat it! It's <laughs> me. That's a heartbreaker if I ever seen one. Dang it! All right, well, we're in the hot zone now, guys. We got two to eat. We're looking okay so far. All right, so community decision. We're gonna make one big, long troll all the way back to the boat ramp. If we can get another fish, great. If not, we're gonna get these two little guys 
cut open, gut it out, and we're gonna head back over, get a flame going, and cook these little bad boys over an open fire. So I can't wait. I'm actually pretty darn hungry. I don't think, this is more a troutatizer, right, Phil? That's right. Yeah, not so much of an appetizer, but troutatizer tonight. Uh, but we're gonna show you a cool little recipe. So cook them over an open fire and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous winter day that we have here. Mm-hmm, looking Couldn't let it go. <laughs> we'll see if two treble hooks can hold on to him. He's gone. Great takedown, everybody. Oh. Darn it, darn it, everybody. You almost had a hog it. on a log back on the way to the boat ramp. Almost had it. Okay, boat strapped down, my hands are freezing. Let's go make us fire. Well, we got our high-tech fish transporting device. And we're gonna get these little bad boys, our trout tizers for the evening cooked up. Love these Gerber scissors for this too. Make it really easy for cleaning any kind of fish, whether it be trout or any of the other fish species. But we're gonna do something pretty cool here. We're just gonna stick these guys on a little spit, give them a little seasoning, get them nice and cleaned up. Okay, got that bad boy nice and cleaned, ready for the seasoning. Fish number two has escaped. Fish number two has escaped. He's escaped. There it is, found it. He didn't go far. Our, our fish transporter is not really working very good now. Look at all the bugs in that thing's poop shoot there. Full of little, little microorganism bugs from that lake. So interesting. It goes to show you how much food they really have and why like on a day like today, it really was tough fishing for us because this fish is absolutely plump full of food yet with a completely different food source than we have even tried to use in our, in our presentations or anything like that. Would have been a good day to have some of those super, super small like chronomid flies or something that is going to be more of that natural presentation rather than those giant woolly buggers that we were using today. So just goes to show you why some of those fish get so big and also why some days they can be so gosh darn hard to catch. That's what we call long, long arming everybody. Two great little trout. Let's go get the cooking. Okay, everybody, so we're back. We're ready to cook. We got some red pepper. We got a little bit of salt. We're gonna go really basic on this, but we're gonna spread these little guys open. We're gonna give them just a little sprinkling of that red pepper. Just a tiny bit of salt. Kind of get that inside nice and flavored up. A little bit of black pepper here for us. That one should be good. Okay, now we're gonna go really simple. I left the heads on these bad guys. I'm gonna run that all the way down to the end of their tail, to the end of the body cavity. And I'm just gonna stick that bad boy all the way through until it hits that cartilage right there at the end. And we're ready to roast. Just like that. Gonna do the same thing with this one. Little red pepper flake. Yummy. A wee bit of salt. Just like that. Kinda get that all pressed in a little bit. Just pepper that bad boy up. I'm gonna do the same protocol on this. Right through the mouth, through the body, right out the back of the tail. Let's roast, everybody. We're having ourselves a trout roast. Ready, Phil? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. So we got our nice little bed of coals here. Phil's got us just an awesome fire going. Remove that big piece. Move a couple of these pieces around. Start roasting. We call these trout dogs. <laughs> no, not you, little. You're not a trout dog. These are trout dogs. You want them? You want a trout dog? Oh, thank you. 
What a great day it was. It, was. it started foggy. It ended sunny. Now we're sitting here having a fire with our friends, cooking up a trout appetizer in the fog on just an absolute beautiful sunset. If you guys never done this before and you've never gone out and tried to trout fish in the winter, I would highly recommend it. It's obviously not the most fisherman friendly thing to do. It's cold, the weather's usually bad, but guess what? The trout are still there and there's fun to be had on a boring, cold afternoon in the middle of the winter time. So be sure to try it. Get out there, get your kids out, take your friends out, go out and have some fun on the water. Just about done there. Starting to see quite a bit of cooked meat. I'm seeing my skin start to really fall apart here, like you see there. Peels, oh, oh, oh tiny, you want some skin? Here you go, good boy. Too bad we ain't got any. Biscuits or cornbread to corn go in. Bread, <laughs> All right. That's looking pretty darn good. What do you think? Oh, that looks pretty darn good to me. Is it? It's getting pretty, yeah, I think uh, we're right there. Well, I think mine's done. Let's I, go chow. Let's go do it. All right. Where do you want him? Let's put it right there next to that guy. Pull some of these bones out. Ooh, I like the way that that fire kind of crisped, crisped up that skin. Makes that stuff really easy to pull off here. We're just gonna do it just like that. Pull each side off. Get all rid of all that skin. Nice and hot still. Tiny dog's gonna just love all these treats. Okay, now that that part's done. I'm going to try to do this here. I'm just going to grab that head, my body, pull that spine back. And hopefully, all that meat will just fall right. Oh, there it goes. That meat's just falling right off the bone there. Oh, that worked out like a thing of beauty. Nothing left but the cat toy. All right, man. We worked hard for this meal. Oh, excuse me for this appetizer. Yum. Pepper on there is good. Delicious. Nice and salty. Mm -hmm. I think I put just the right amount of salt on there. You can taste the pepper. You can taste the red pepper. Mm. That was worth all the rowing around the lake. All day long. All day long. I love how cooking it like that mm -hmm. made it to where you can just peel that bone right out of there and there ain't nothing left. Here you go, little. Want a treat? Good boy. Well, everybody, we hope you enjoyed this little adventure with us today. It's a great way to spend a winter's day out there on the pond with some good friends, changing up methods, changing up tactic. Moving around the lake. We found fish to spot everywhere, but unfortunately not the giant one. But you guys are going to have to tune in next time for that. If you guys like these videos and you want to see more catching cooks just like this, be sure to go up here and click this link to this next video. If you haven't already done so, go down here and subscribe. Turn your bell on. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And comment below and you can be the comment of the day like this guy right here. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.